Hello guys, now in this tutorial I will be showing you how to create a C++ program for the definite integration using the trapezoidal rule. Now remember that um, a trapezoidal rule is not a very good rule to evaluate integrals so the answer or the solution that we may get would be quite you know different or a little off by some error okay so how does this trapezoidal rule works is very simple suppose you have this function f of x now what you're gonna do is you are going to approximate it using a line and then uh, if you join the, this point to this uh, to your x-axis and this point to your uh, x-axis again and then you end up with a trapezoidal and since you know that the area under the curve is basically the definite integral of that curve um, within points A and B. So here the area under this linear or this trapez the area of this trapezium would be uh, up to some ex extent you know uh, approximating the area under this curve. So it is a pretty good and easy rule that you can use to evaluate definite integrals if you are studying in a class of numerical methods or numerical analysis then you will be taught this rule very definitely so a further you know example of how this rule works is or let's look into the details is uh, you can see that this is this blue line represents your curve now as in the previous example we were approximating the whole curve with only a single trapezium but what if um, in fact you were using multiple trapezium as you can see that as you go on increasing the number of trapeziums the approximation keeps getting better and better so what you're going to do is you're going to approximate small bits of this whole curve and approximate them using lines and then form these trapeziums now then you are going to calculate the area under various trapeziums and at, sum it up sum it all up and what you get after adding them all up is your um, indefinite integral. Now this is the formula for your definite integral based on the last example and suppose you are approximating a function using n trapeziums then you will have uh, you know the width of each trapezium would be delta x which can also be given by b minus a divided by n if n is the number of trapeziums that you are using. So delta x is b minus a divided by n where a is the initial limit and b is your final limit of the integral and this is your function being approximated by n trapeziums or um, okay so this is your formula. Now how to come about uh, now how are you going to create a program for that. So here is my trapezoidal uh, rule program which can be used to evaluate definite integrals first of all this uh, now I'll be going to, uh, through this program pretty fast because it's pretty simple and in case you want this code this whole code has been attached in the description below and you can also check out my website on um, braggedoff.com and just um, put the search here or trapezoidal method or anything just type it in here I will also put the link to this um, website and this program here in the description below and you can just check out this whole program has been uh, pasted here and uh, with an example output also okay so back to our program so okay so uh, now I'll be going through this pretty fast because you can understand it later using uh, by going through this program and it's pretty simple really because this video is just meant for show demonstration of how you can really evaluate definite integrals using C++ and you don't need high tech calculators for that. Anyway, so suppose you have to evaluate a definite integral of a function 1 by 1 plus x square. So you will, you know, define that here and you can change it accordingly. Suppose the next time I want to evaluate a square root, a definite integral of square root of 1 plus x square. So you can, um, you know, write any function here that you want to find the definite integral for then you will ask the user for the limits of the integration that is the initial limit the final limit 
you will ask the user how many sub intervals that he wants to have and as you can see in this example uh, that I showed you the more is the number of these trapeziums and the better is your approximation of the different intervals so here you can enter the number of trapeziums that you want and then and uh, there it is some code to find out the values for y0, y1, y2, y3 and so on which are which have been used here. and since you can see the interval is divided into uh, the curve is divided into n sub intervals therefore you will have n plus one points keep that in mind okay but suppose you go from y0 then you will go up to y n that is what I'm doing here in this code and uh, I will declare some arrays of n plus one points and uh, the size will be n plus one and then I will you well now h h is my delta x here as I showed you already let me just place this window window right here oh, okay I'll have to place this also like this not working on it or what um, I'm not sure why is it working okay so we'll have to do it by mouse itself okay so now don't need much of that so let me just expand it up till here okay so h is my delta x which is basically b the final limit minus a the initial limit divided by the number of sub intervals so that is my h now we will start a loop that will keep evaluating your y0 y1 y2 and x1 x2 x3 so that's all that is going on here and I will not explain this step much I hope you can understand it and I would like it for you to go through it what is happening here I mean it is crucial for the program and the next step here is to evaluate h into y1 up till y n n minus 1 so that is delta x in uh, if you look at this formula that would be delta x into y1 plus y2 plus up till y n minus 1 but not y0 and not y n so that's what I'm gonna do here sum is equal to sum plus h into y i and that's all so you will end up with this after this loop has run and after that what I'm gonna do is pretty basic as you can see the formula dictates that it is h by 2 so there's my h by 2 and then multiplied by y0 so there's my y0 in the brackets here and then um, there is the yn so that's my yn and then I have closed the brackets and separately I'm what I'm doing is I'm adding this sum back into the integral because what I've done here is that as you can see that h by 2 multiplied by if you take 2 common here and then write it like one y1 plus y2 plus y3 and so on I hope you get it it's pretty simple really so now 2 times and uh, 2 here and 2 there would cancel each other and you will end up with h y1 plus h y2 plus h y3 and so on up to y n minus 1 so that's what is happening here since my sum term already was multiplied by h and and this 2 would be cancelled already so I didn't need to multiply it by 2 and thus this is my integral and all I need to do is output this integral now let's quickly run this program for a function y is equal to 1 plus x squared let me just maximize it okay so y is equal to 1 plus oh sorry it's 1 by 1 plus x squared 1 upon 1 plus x squared so let's run it okay so g plus plus trapezoid or is it a what? okay so running it limits of integration I have this example in my book which says let me integrate it from 0 to 6 where, and I will be taking the number of sub intervals as 6 and the answer is the definite integral is 1.4108 and believe me it is correct I have already manually verified it and it is absolutely correct for 6 however it is correct as in if you do it by hand you will also arrive at this value however if you try to find out the actual definite integral of this function 
1 upon 1 plus x square it would be a little bit different from what you see here and I can verify it real quick too because okay. let me just open my calculator okay so the integral of 1 by 1 plus x square is 10 inverse or arc 10x so if you find out the value of arc 10x at 0 okay so don't we have like arc 10x in our calculators I don't know why okay so it seems like we don't have the calculation of I don't get it I mean I thought that we had the arc 10x feature in our calculator I can't find it right now though okay sorry for wasting some time here but I really want to find out 10x where am I going wrong it should be about here in the scientific calculator okay so where is it okay anyways so I couldn't find it. Uh, anyways, you can verify it by finding the value of ten, ten, arc 10x, ten that is 10 inverse x. And, um, some people call it 10 inverse x, some call it ten, arc 10x. Ten um, so, arc 10 0 is 0 because 10, in, ten 0 is 0 basically. And 10, um, I'm sorry, arc 10x at x is equal to 6 is 1.4506 something like that and okay so another thing that you should note about this pro, uh, this method is that as you will increase the number of steps that you are going to perform this integration for then you will approximate the answer in a better way suppose I increase the number of steps to boom 100 then you will get a better answer that is 1.40565 which I believe is pretty much accurate uh, if I recall correctly as I can verify it right now but anyways it is pretty much yeah apps okay I just checked it in my book I hope I think I would add a snapshot of that you know in the video after editing it so it would be right here so okay so this answer is verified so you, as you can see you need to go to up to 100 steps to find out the correct answer that is uh, uh, this method is not very accurate but if you are ha if you have a you know pretty fast computer then you can just increase the number of steps to any much any value that you want and it will give you the correct answer now let's try it for another example that is f of x is equal to square root of 1 plus x squared and let's run it first let me compile it now we'll run it and we'll perform the okay I have this example somewhere here so we will perform this integral from 1 to 5 with n is equal to 8 so where is that okay so initial limit is 5 uh, 1 and the final limit is 5 and the number of intervals was 8 and we get 12.76 which is exactly what we got from manual calculation down here 12.76 right here so I hope you like this video and I hope that it was of some help to you because I spent some time making it and I sincerely hope that you found it valuable or it helped you in any way possible and if you like the video or it helped you in any way then don't forget to press the like button and if you have any suggestions or any comments or any questions then don't forget to leave them in the comment section below and also you can subscribe to me if you are interested in these kind of videos about numerical analysis numerical methods I will be posting some programs and also you can check out my website braggadoff.com yeah read learn and then brag among your friends and where you can just press this button right here type in whatever you want to find just type in C++ for if you want to find a C++ program and you will have access to you know wow my internet is acting up right now <laughs> took ages to load this page okay so you will get all these programs for numerical analysis as you can see right here hope you found the video useful that's it for today bye bye